Hello, hello, my dear Blava Barda gamers. Today, I want to tell you a little story that is based on the past, but that is still influencing me today. You see, me and my friends used to play the new Pokemon game very, very much when it came out. And this left us with some boredom, and not only that, but the inability to play said Pokemon game. And in fact, every other game i don't know why but it started to become something like we couldn't play anything and enjoy it the same it's like pokemon scarlet and violet broke us in some way now this is improvised i have somewhat of a script but not really so bear with me i am going to describe to you now how it happened what this Pokemon effect is, and maybe if there's some other ways to get out of this feeling. So I guess if me and all of my friends actually had this thing, maybe some other people out there, maybe you watching, you might have experienced it yourself. So, let's talk about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for a second. When I started playing, I decided to try and not give much attention to details. And it worked, like, I mean, details like the ground, for example, or stuff like that, like, you know, those details that weren't good, they were bad, actually, very bad to look at. And not only that, but also details in the fights, in the way that they decided to do things what they decided to cut from Arceus, what they decided to integrate. I kind of liked it, but also, eh. So, and I think every one of my friends felt the same way. But it worked. It felt like the game was an interesting take on the franchise, with some of the gameplay uh, elements from Arcus that I loved and the complexity of the mainline games. So the balance was pretty good, I would say, at the end of the day. Difficulty was also something that, in the beginning, I thought was balanced a little bit better. Uh, because some of the fights were actually entertaining and somewhat challenging. So, this is true. In the beginning, again, in the beginning, it felt that way. And it felt that way probably because of the fact that I wasn't going the right way, let's say. So I was taking a, a route that was unconventional and made the fight more difficult for me. So some of the fight in the beginning. Um, it quickly changed when I realized that the experience was not balanced at all. But at that point, I was too much into it and too much into my new team because I had my Pokemons, obviously. You know, if you play Pokemon, you get really attached to Pokemons and you don't want to, at least I didn't want to uh, leave them there. So <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense. Um, the game basically became a checklist of tasks that I couldn't stop myself from completing. But most of the time, I got no enjoyment from those tasks. Probably because of said balancing issues. Because I suspect that if the game was balanced better, and the experience I had in the beginning was the whole of the experience, the game would be so cool. It would be very cool. But it wasn't. So I started playing less and less, and I don't mean only Pokemon, I mean every other game. And I started also to play something else in between sessions. But somehow I was broken, I couldn't play anything and get in fun. So I was getting bored every time. And when I realized what was happening, it was too late. I was too much into it and my friends didn't realize it was happening to them until I told them about this concept. And then they all agreed that it was happening to them. <laughs> Which is interesting. It is at this point that I had a weird conversation with my friend. 
all of them were experiencing the same kind of effect and none of them were able to find a solution which sucked it sucked very much it still sucked to me because i'm still not out of it <laughs> yeah as i was saying at the time i'm writing this video nothing really changed for me and my friends well they recovered but it took time and they still don't know how and why they're COVID, so they can't really help me. I'm led to believe this effect won't go away because of my depression, but I cannot ignore my same friends who were in the same situation and they, they lived that situation for a while. So maybe it's something that is worse because of my depression, but it actually exists. This phenomena of getting so freaking broken by Pokemon. I know it's true. And it happened hard uh, on me with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It isn't the first time that it happened to me. It happened to me with also with other Pokemon games in the last years, like Sword and Shield. But not as hard. And that day I also realized that this thing was happening to my friends as well, so it might be happening to somebody else. So I thought, why not try to speak about it publicly? So we can all find a solution together. So people in the same position as us can watch this video, recognize that the problem exists, and maybe think together about a solution. I'm gonna propose one. Bear with me. You see, at that point, I thought it didn't work for me, by the way. At that point, I thought, what's the anti-Pokemon? What's the anti-Pokemon? It worked for a friend of mine, though, probably. Well, the anti-Pokemon is Digimon. So, it might help me to get rid of this Pokemon effect, right? Why not? Well, I was wrong. But at least I was able to play from start to finish without feeling so wrong about myself. So... I guess it did something. It was the best I could do. Enter Digimon Survive, a little gem that I really enjoyed. So at this point of the script, of the script, I am supposed to tell you how much I enjoyed Digimon Survive, and I'm gonna do it. But before anything else, I want to say this is an experience that is a little bit different than most other games like Pokemon games or Digimon game, even other Digimon games. So it's a light novel, light novel. I don't remember. I don't remember how they're called, but yeah, it has a lot of text. It's not for everyone. It was for me. It was really for me. It was oh so much for me. It was so dramatic, so energetic, so cool. I loved every instant of that game, even the boring parts where the, the story just drags on and on and on and on and on and on because I was so dragged into every detail of it. Like, it's so beautiful. All the different directions it can take, there, there are actually not that many directions it can take, but it makes you feel a little bit like it has many directions, at least. And also, the directions are impactful, are very impactful. So, yeah, if you like a game like Baldur's Gate 3, for example, and you like Digimon, or crap, even if you don't like Digimon, even if it is your first time having to deal with Digimon, play it. I say play it. It's very cool. It's an emotional game that I wasn't expecting. It's a little bit horror. Digimons are kind of creepy. A lot of creepy, actually. Like in the anime, but more. Or do they? I don't know. In general, yes, but I think there are some creepier moments in the anime. Might be wrong. Well, Digimon Survive has a lot of creepy moments. And they're very good. Tension is high, the story is told marvelously, I think, in my opinion. 
it's a really great game. So yeah, that's it. In the end, I'm still here, fatigued, fat fatigued by what I now recognize as the worst Pokemon experience that I have ever lived. Sad, I am here telling you, play Digimon Survive. You won't be disappointed. It's a really cool game. It's it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. You have to like to read. That's true. But it's a really well-made game. It's a little gem. And yeah, it needs to be recognized more in my opinion. Because it fly it flew a little bit off the radar. And that's sad because it's a really cool game. I wanna talk about cool game that flew over the radar, let's say, and I'm gonna do it in my next videos, I think, so stay tuned, and if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!